So let me introduce you to four amazing Canon lenses which you'd wished you knew about before buying your last expensive Leica lens. I think I was shocked to myself when I bought my first Canon lens. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me again. In this video, I'm gonna teach you what I wish someone taught me when I started out my Leica photography. Stay tuned and I'm gonna save you a lot of money. I'm gonna show you four Leica cameras with four Canon lenses. Canon LTM vintage lenses for Leica cameras. This video is part of a series of lens videos I'm going to record for you showing how affordable lenses are for Leica cameras if you know what you're looking for. And this is what I wish somebody had told me seven plus years ago. When I was just buying what Leica advertise, you see in the magazines or on the online people are using the summer looks, the, the summer cron, the summer rit, the Noctiluks. You automatically go and buy those lenses because that's what's being marketed to you. But as you start to develop a brain from a pea size to a slightly swollen pea size that I now have, you realise there's a lot more amazing lenses for a fraction of the price. Lenses from £50 through to three to £400. And if you compare that to a £2,000 to £5,000 Leica lens, you're going to save a lot of money. So I recommend, if you're not already subscribed, if you like this, this kind of video, feel free to hit the subscribe button because there's more coming on the same topics. I have the lenses already. I'm lucky that I own these lenses and I use these lenses. So I'll have real examples for each lens I talk about. All the time I've been doing my Leica photography, I've never once considered lenses by the likes of Nikon or Canon to be used on a Leica camera. <clears throat> At the end of last year, I discovered Leica 3 cameras. These are vintage Leicas from the 1930s. The difference between a Leica M camera and a Leica 3 is Leica 3 cameras have LTM lenses, LTM mount, which means a Leica thread mount or like a screw mount also known as L39 and the same thread is M39 if you're looking on eBay for lenses. Leica thread mount lenses are made by different companies. The obvious choice being a Leica photographer in my head was buy Leica lenses for my Leica cameras. So I got the Leica Summitar 50 or 5 centimeter f2 which basically means 50 millimeter f2. This came with the first like a three camera but buying this camera gave me a real interest in these old LTM lenses. After a lot of reading and research it seemed common knowledge that Japanese lenses made in the same period as these early Leica lenses were optically of higher standard than the Leica lenses. If you look at take the Leica Summitar is a great example. This lens is very soft wide open. Yes it makes really pleasing out of focus background bokeh but it is soft and it's almost it's soft but in a nice way for digital but for my personal taste it's soft in a almost too soft way wide open for film so then i went out of my way to look for a sharper ltm 50mm lens for my leica 3 camera so it goes down after some research canon ltm lenses from the 1950s are sharper than that's not strictly true some Canon lenses from the 1950s are sharper than the Leica lenses from the 1950s. And that was of interest to me because I wanted sharp lenses for vintage cameras so I could shoot it wide open for my film portraits. With the lens at the maximum aperture, I'd still get both sharp enough detail on the subject and then pleasing out of focus background. I think I was shocked to myself when I bought my first Canon lens. It somehow in my head didn't seem right to be buying a Canon lens as both a Leica photographer and history of Nikon. Generally speaking, if you're Nikon or Canon, there's very little swap over. When I was kind of growing as a photographer, I wanted the sharpest, best, most clinically amazing, cut it like a knife lenses you could buy. I was buying the Leica, again, Leica Summer Looks, the Summicron 75 millimeter Apo lens, ridiculously sharp like a macro Elmar M 90mm f4 lens, also crazy sharp. And then the problem I've got is I photograph female models. Most of my work, if you've not seen my photography, is female portraiture. Girls 
don't necessarily want you to use your sharpest lens to show all their flaws. I realise that sometimes softer lenses are actually quite nice. This is why it was popular back in the film days where you'd use softening lenses on the front of a good lens to make it softer and more forgiving for the skin. So a very good example of this would be say a Hasselblad with a macro plane 120mm f4 lens. That is a crazy sharp lens, even wide open, even shooting film, you don't need to sharpen the image at all. The film scan, it's that sharp. If you put that on someone's face who doesn't have, like mine, that doesn't have a, a perfect face, they would prefer it if you use a less perfect lens. It's trying to find, a, for me, it's trying to find a balance between something like a, a vintage Leica lens, which is so soft, it's kind of painterly soft and that can be nice, but I need some detail. I want the photos still to be technically good to satisfy myself, but also rendered in a pleasing way where they're not that arty soft, but sharp enough to not look out of focus. What shall I start with? <laughs> I have four, four Leica cameras in front of me with four beautiful looking Canon lenses on. I don't know where to start. So let's start with a camera around my neck. This, if you're a Leica shooter, you'll probably recognize is a Leica M3. Now, if it didn't have a cap on the front, you probably wouldn't recognize, would not recognize the, the lens. And this is a Canon 50 millimeter F1.8. You need to get this lens. <laughs> You need to get this lens, but before you hit eBay or find your wallet, wait because it depends on what you like. You might like one of the other lenses more. I don't want to over egg it. If you want 90, 80 to 90% sharpness of a summer looks on a vintage Canon lens, shot to wide open at f1.8, you will love this lens. To begin with, look at the size difference. It's probably half the weight and two thirds of the size. So this is a Canon 50mm f1.8. If you're a 50mm guy and you want a very affordable lens for your like a camera and you like sharp images with the lens shot to wide open, this lens is amazing and it's crazy affordable. It flares a little bit but it doesn't flare as bad as the old Leica lenses. You can just get a Canon lens hood which slots over the top and then that obviously cuts down the flare quite considerably and just, you just learn to work with the equipment that you have. If you like flare, flared images shoot at the sun on purpose or at the point of light. If you don't like that look and you want to high contrast straight out of camera on film, don't point at the sun or at the light source, have the light source behind you and then you don't need a lens hood. Good addition if you want to cut down on the flare. Canon lens number one, Canon 50mm f1.8 LTM. If you want to be really sold on this lens, here are a few images shot with the Canon 50mm f1.8 on a Leica M3, this Leica M3. Are you ready for number two? Canon lens number two, unlike a camera number two. This is a 35mm f1.8 Canon lens on a APS-C crop sensor like a mirrorless camera, the Leica CL. This is a 1.5 times crop camera, so the 35mm on a 1.5 crop gives roughly equivalent to a 50mm lens. So by using the 35mm on the CL, it gives me a 50mm equivalent for portraits. Now this lens is also super tiny. Look at the difference. Summer Lux, Canon 35, 1.8. Obviously I can use this lens 
on a full frame camera like the like M240 for digital photos or like M6, like M3. I quite enjoy using it on the like M2 because on the like M2 you've got a clean viewfinder for 35mm frame line and with the 35mm fast lens it's a really nice setup for kind of environmental portraits. So Canon lens number two, Canon 35mm f1.8 LTM. Again I can include a few photos with the 35mm lens on different Leica cameras. Okay, Canon lens number three. This is amazing. This is one of the most used Canon lenses I have since buying my four Canon lenses. Look at that for a beautiful setup. Now this is a Canon 28mm f2.8 LTM lens and I absolutely love it. It is so small and so light. Size, quick size check. Over half the size, obviously it's a 50mm lens, but over the half the size difference and probably half the weight or more of the summer looks. Obviously it's not a straight comparison, just for size. Why, am I, why is this lens mounted on this camera? This is a Leica 3A camera with a 50mm uh, frame light, well a 50mm view window. There's no frame lines on these cameras, but it is lightweight. If you compare it to like M3, like a three cameras are small. Being a 28mm lens, I cannot compose the image with this camera's built-in viewfinder. So I'm using a Voigtlander 28mm hot shoe viewfinder with bright lines. And then I can compose. I'm focusing through, there's two windows on these cameras. I focus through the left window compose with the hot shoe viewfinder take the picture this is my current go-to setup for travel for the 28 mil focal length if you saw my previous video on the tiny leica m mount lenses one reason i skipped 28 mil in the leica m mount lineup is because for 28 millimeter i prefer to use ltm lenses canon lens number three on like a camera number three, Canon 28mm f2.8 LTM. And I'll include some images. This is not a lens that I bought for portraits. It's for, I guess, travel photography. Um, when I'm traveling to do overseas shoots with models, I quite enjoy kind of exploring the local area. I normally run it in the mornings. I can put this either in like a hydration vest pocket or on a belt around my waist. And it's light enough to not cause too many problems. So it means I can explore and find cool things to photograph with a camera which allows me to do it and obviously shoot 35mm film. Are you ready? Have you picked which is your favourite Canon LTM lens yet? Because there is one more. The last lens I have for Canon so far. Canon lens number four. is this beauty. This is a Canon 50mm f1.4 LTM. Now if we just do a quick comparison, on the M3 you've got a 50mm 1.8, on the Leica M6 you have a 50mm 1.4. You can see there is a bit of a size difference. You can tell it's a larger lens because the hood of the 50mm 1.8 fits inside the front of the 50mm 1.4. In terms of size compared to a, like a Summerlux, which is kind of a straight comparison, it is still quite considerably smaller than the Summerlux and it is lighter. What do I have to say about the 50mm f1.4 LTM? The f1.4 is less sharp than the 50mm 1.8. The 1.8, I could shoot it wide open all day on a film camera, which just to explain myself, if I'm shoot, if I mean shoot wide open on film, 
that means you could definitely shoot it wide open on digital because digital you can pull more sharpness on the images. The 50mm 1.4 on digital is amazing. It's really good. I'll include some digital images and I've not really had a proper test of the 50mm 1.4 on film because the only film that I shot this lens with is a soft looking film. So I don't think I've given it a fair test. I need to shoot something like Kodak T-Max 400 or a sharp film to show the true potential from the Canon 51.4 wide open. But from results obtained so far, the 51.4 is slightly less sharp than the 51.8, which makes sense. But the background is beautiful and the colors are really nice as well. I'll show you some images and then we can recap. Okay, so to recap, the four Canon lenses we looked at. Number one, Canon 50mm f1.8 LTM. Number two was the Canon 35mm f1.8 LTM. Number three, the Canon 28mm f2.8 LTM. And last but not least, the Canon 50mm f1.4 LTM. Now, these are just the four lenses that I decided to buy. There are more Canon LCM lenses available. The f1.2 I thought was too soft for my taste, so I ruled that lens out. The 50mm f1.5 is less easy to find online, and I was happy that with my 1.4 for a faster, slightly bigger lens, and my 51.8 for a smaller, sharp lens. So for 50 mils, I'm happy. I don't feel the need for anything else at the moment. For my travel setup, the 28 mil is absolutely perfect. It is so small. That is one lens I will never sell. I'm not really good at selling lenses. That's why I guess I'm well set up for making YouTube videos because I've collected quite a few lenses. The 28 mil is really nice. I just love the, the size of it. It's just so good. Obviously you can use this lens. This is obviously full frame, even though it's a small looking camera. But I, I can use that lens on, I've used it on my Leica M3 with the same viewfinder. I've used it on the Leica CL film camera. And that gives a really nice small setup. And yeah, just amazing. So my recommendations are, I guess number one, look at the images and see if you like how the photos render. And then number two, if you're a 35 mm shooter, it's fairly clear, look at researching 35 mm LTM lenses. The 35 1.8 is really good and the rendering is really nice. There are other versions with different f-stops. If you want a compact lens for like a travel photography or maybe something like street photography, if you do street with a 28mm, definitely consider the Canon 28 LTM. And if you just want the ultimate background blur and pleasing images from a digital sensor, I highly recommend the Canon 50mm f1.4. Obviously, you can use it on film as well, and I will. I'm not gonna, I'm keeping this lens. Now, one question you may have is, how do you mount these lenses onto a Leica M-mount camera? Because these are thread mount lenses. Just to show you, there's the Leica thread mount LTM lens. So all these kind of lenses have the same thread as this. This camera, the Leica 3, is a Leica thread mount body. So that's like a native LTM body camera. So the LTM lenses fit straight onto these vintage Leica cameras with no, no adapters. But if you have a modern lens, a modern Leica, say a Leica M6, such as this one, you are going to need an adapter to attach a Leica thread mount lens to a Leica M camera body. And for that, you need one of these tiny washers. And I kept one of the boxes to show you, as I knew this video was gonna be coming soon enough. This is a, it's labeled as M39 to LM adapter. 
Now, again, being the dumbass that I am, it sometimes takes me a bit longer to work out things that normal people get straight away. I looked on eBay and I wanted to get a couple of these adapters to use it on multiple, to use multiple LTM lenses on multiple like camera bodies. So I bought, I saw the M39 to LM listing on eBay. I clicked, bought two, job done. And then if you see my, if you see my Lomography 800 review, that is a clear indication that I'm a dumbass because in that video, I took a Leica M4P to Tenerife for a model shoot and I shot some Lomography film, hence it's in that video. And what I couldn't, could not understand was when I looked through the viewfinder, I had a 50mm lens, LTM lens on the front of the camera. But when I looked through the viewfinder, it always showed me the 35mm frame lines. And so I just thought that's how it is because basically because it's an old lens, it's not going to trigger the automatic frame lines in your camera. One reason I was using the 50mm lenses on the M3 the most is because the like M3 has a 50mm frame line window. So I couldn't screw it up because I was using 50mm, mostly 50mm LTM lenses. So I could put any LTM lens onto the like M3 and I'd always have the correct composition. But then when I went to Tenerife, I decided to take the Leica M4P or one of those cameras. And because that's like a Leica M6, I was seeing 35mm frame lines in the lens. So then obviously in a fast paced kind of model shoot, you don't always have time to think or you're getting distracted by talking small talk to keep the models kind of moving and looking as good as they can. And for whatever reason, I totally forgot that I was using a 50mm lens and a 35mm frame line. So all the images on that trip were composed for 35 and shot with a 50, meaning they're all cropped because obviously if that's your say 35mm window, your 50mm window is going to be inside. So it overcropped in every film photo, which is a bit frustrating. However, I did learn eventually. So what I've realized is what most people probably know straight away. These adapters, this is how it looks. Really cheap on eBay. These adapters, when you look on eBay, have a number or a pair of numbers. And you need to pick the adapter to suit your lens. So if you're buying the 35mm f1.8 LTM lens, you need to be careful and smarter than me and buy adapters that say 39mm adapter, 35mm adapter. So what had happened was I bought originally 50mm LTM lenses and 35mm line adapters because these have different designs to trigger different frame lines on a Leica M camera. So when you're buying a adapter, obviously you don't need this brand to search for, this says M39 to LM, but you can search for LTM adapters or L39 adapters to like an M mount. And then you need to buy the one with the numbers that correlates to your lens. So if you've got a 50 mil lens, make sure you have the one that says 50 mil on it. It will normally say a pair of numbers, so it might say 50 mil to 75. If you've got a 35 mil LTM lens, make sure you buy the 35 mil adapter because then it will trigger the 35 mil window in your Leica camera. This is more important if you're using a Leica M6, Leica M4P, kind of the later Leica M bodies because they have the different frame line options. If you've only got a Leica M3, you don't need to worry because you've only got the 50 mil window is kind of sufficient for if you're going to use the 50mm lens anyway, equally if you use it like an M2 and your only interest is 35mm, you can buy any adapter because the clear 35mm window in your like M2 will give you the correct composition for 35mm Canon lens. So in this video I've talked about Canon LTM lenses and shown them how I use 
Canon lenses on Leica cameras, but you can of course use Canon LTM lenses on any cameras. I use them on the Leica mirrorless camera, crop sensor, Leica CL, and mirrorless cameras make adapting lenses very easy. So you can use LTM lenses on Sony, you can use LTM lenses on Fuji cameras, you can use LTM lenses on Micro Four Thirds. You just need different adapters for different digital cameras. So for my Micro Four Thirds uh, Lumix GH5, which is recording, all I did was buy a Micro Four Thirds to like a th L39 adapter. And that means I can use these lenses for recording videos. Some of my previous videos are shot on the Canon 50mm 1.4. Just for, just for fun. The videos that are shot outside, so the lockdown video and roller call video, and maybe one more, were all shot on a 1950s Canon lens, which I think is quite cool. I just did like a DIY masking tape fit to fit a neutral density filter onto it because I didn't have the right size step rings. So if you're considering buying a Leica lens for your Leica camera, I think Leica photographers will probably go into maybe two different camps. Some Leica photographers will only consider Leica lenses and that's totally fine. That's probably more how I was originally. Although to start off with I bought cheaper lenses because I couldn't afford Leica. So I got a digital Leica camera because I love the rangefinder experience but then I couldn't afford any lenses. So I started off with Voigtlander, the Voigtlander 40mm and then I was looking for other cheaper Voigtlander lenses and old vintage Leica lenses. M mount, Leica M mount. I don't know where I'm going with this. Yes, so before you buy an expensive Leica lens, it's really worth considering searching on websites like Flickr for Canon LTM. Or I mean, you could buy Zeiss lenses, you could buy Voigtlander lenses. There's lots of cheaper options than just buying Leica. I thought Zeiss was a good deal because it's cheaper than Leica. I then discovered Voigtlander. Voigtlander is a good deal because it's cheaper than Carl Zeiss. And you think, oh, I don't know, just for argument's sake, £600 for lens bargain compared to Leica because you found it made by Voigtlander or Carl Zeiss, for example. If you then discover the amazing world, which is LTM lenses, you could buy between two and four really nice lenses for the price of one. 600 pound lens and that was already a massive saving compared to the Leica lens that you looked at originally for example so what i'm trying to say is please consider the ltm lenses for your cameras before spending heavily on Leica lenses even if it's just to if you love the, if you love your Leica m6 You've spent all your money on your Leica M6 because that was your dream camera. And then you, you're, like, you're like, oh no, I've got no money left to buy a lens with. Rather than save, rather than not use the camera and save up for 12 months, whatever, to buy your first Leica lens. Instead of not using your Leica M6 for 12 months, I highly recommend considering something like the Canon 50mm f1.8, which is normally under £200 to go on your Leica M6 you're enjoying the camera because of the camera experience and the lens is, in my eyes, easily good enough to give you pleasing pictures so you get the most out of your camera. Now, I've only talked about Canon lenses that I use, but I just wanted to give you a flavour of this seemingly unknown world to many photographers of affordable lenses which I wish I knew about before buying some of my Leica lenses. I'm really happy that I discovered Leica thread mount. If you, could, if you use Canon lenses yourself, I'd love to hear what your favourite Canon LTM lens is. Maybe there's some Canon LTM lenses which you use, which you think I should use. If so, please comment in the... What are you supposed to write? If so, please write. If you use Canon LTM lenses already, I'd love to hear what Canon lens you are using and on what camera. Maybe you're using it on a Sony. Maybe you're using it on a Micro Four Thirds. I think YouTube naturally shows my videos to Leica photographers but if you shoot Sony or other brands I'd love to hear from you too. There is more LTM videos to come.
this is the first LTM video in a series because I have too many LTM lenses to make one video. The original plan was to make one mega video, but I realized it'd take have a duration of about three hours if I tried to talk about all the LTM lenses in one video. So I'm trying to break them down into groups. So the LTM video one, Canon lenses. Hope you found it useful. See you in the next video.